Insect Hell. The SCP Foundation has to deal with all sorts of world-ending threats, and they've generally become quite adept at handling them. Sometimes, though, a problem comes along that just slips out of the Foundation's control, and before they know it, they've ushered in a fresh apocalypse. Insects don't typically rank high on the lists of threats to the global population, but too much of anything can be a real problem. This canon depicts a scenario in which a rather unique insect grows completely out of control, leading to a situation that can only be described as insect hell. The insect hell scenario begins with a document from Wilson's Wildlife Solutions, a group sanctioned by the Foundation to assist in containing anything that falls under the wildlife category, from anomalous wolves to spiders. They had stumbled upon a unique Australian plague locust in Oregon that they named Genghis. They found it after its swarm was responsible for a crop shortage, and it was determined that they were growing at an unusually fast rate. Australian plague locusts shouldn't have even been able to survive in the Oregon climate, let alone thrive, but after some tests, they discovered why. When Genghis eats enough food, it splits into two locusts, and it's apparently capable of doing this quite often if it's fed enough. Based on their research, they guessed that Genghis had been here for around 13 years, although it wasn't especially active at first. They had been tracking them for a couple of months, eventually getting a call that the swarm was nearby. When they had arrived though, the swarm had been sprayed with pesticides, and they only managed to save one, Genghis. It's presumed that all of the replicated locusts can also replicate. A Wildlife Solutions member named Carl Heller was placed in charge of Genghis, with it and a few others placed in a greenhouse, and the rest of the current swarm in another greenhouse. All of them are given plenty to eat, allowing them to freely multiply. They also like to allow animals to experience their natural habitat from time to time, so they occasionally drive the swarm out to a field surrounded by a mesh fence, and allow them to roam. When the swarm grows too large, they sell a number of the locusts off to scientific corporations for testing. Unfortunately, on March 6, 2021, Carl Heller was caught in a multiple car crash while driving the swarm out to the field, allowing the swarm to escape containment. The Foundation is contacted to assist in recontainment. This leads the Foundation to quickly classify Genghis as SCP-3916, noting its anomalous traits. For one, it can consume food at an alarming rate, roughly 100 grams of matter per second, although it only has been found to eat fresh plant matter. Secondly is its ability to replicate after consuming a sufficient amount of food, around 500 grams worth. Due to the speed at which it can consume 500 grams though, this is quite worrisome. The Foundation did manage to track down most of the escaped swarm, but most isn't really good enough in this situation, with the remaining insects spreading rapidly across Oregon and into California. This could very quickly become a broken masquerade scenario in which the public becomes aware of anomalies. So, to give themselves a bit of leeway in their operations, the Foundation began working with the US government. They formed a new organization known as LARPA, Locust Active Removal and Prevention Agency, which is entirely funded and staffed by the Foundation, but is publicly part of the US government. Five months go by, and the situation isn't looking good. Not only has the Foundation not managed to contain the spread of the locusts, a new subspecies of Genghis has popped up in containment. During a routine examination of the swarm in containment, a researcher was attacked and eaten by the swarm, revealing that the locusts have now progressed to eating both plant matter and animal matter. So far, there have been no instances of the locusts outside of containment eating animal matter, but the situation is growing even more worrisome. On a talk show, America Ahead with Daniel Daly, the locust situation is brought up due to their effect on America's environment and agriculture, and what LARPA is doing to fix it. 
Michael Simmons, administrator of the LARPA headquarters, and Dr. James Patan, LARPA's lead researcher, are brought on to discuss the situation. Simmons says that LARPA is working to find pesticides that can limit the locusts, and they're working to find a way to make sure this doesn't happen again. As for finding the pesticides, Patan says they have been exposing the locusts to a number of different pesticides, but mostly the results have turned out negative. Daly asks them why these locusts are so resilient, with Patan explaining them as being akin to a different strain of locusts, although their species is still the Australian plague locust. This brings the discussion over to how exactly some Australian plague locusts ended up in the US, with Simmons saying that even two locusts were enough to start something like this. Daly questions him on the usage of the word were, but Simmons corrects himself and says could have been. Daly moves on to asking about the estimated impact of LARPA on the environment and the economy. Patan replies that if LARPA does their job, the US won't need to go through with their proposed ration acts, and eventually there will be plenty of jobs in agriculture again. As for dealing with the locust, Simmons plans on exterminating all of them, although Patan disagrees, stating that Simmons is not a doctor. Daly asks if it's ethical to drive a species to intentional extinction, but Simmons says ethics doesn't matter as long as his job is to save human lives. Both Dr. Patan and Daly team up against Simmons, arguing against genocide of the locusts, and Simmons grows angrier, yelling at them that he's not going to stand by and watch as these bugs destroy their way of life. Patan argues that if they wipe out all of the locusts without learning from the situation, they'll just pop back up again, perhaps worse than before. He says that containment is the right answer, but Simmons responds that extermination is the only way, and he'll give every US citizen a flamethrower if that's what it takes. Simmons eventually storms off the set while exclaiming that this is the future of humanity at stake, and they're down to the line. Patan remains behind and explains that Simmons is qualified for his position, he's just under a lot of stress right now, understandably so. He concludes by telling the American people that these few locusts will not be the end of America. The following day, Simmons and Patan discuss the show back at LARPA headquarters. Simmons apologizes for the way he acted, with Patan saying that now America thinks a whack job is running LARPA, and it makes them all look bad. Regardless, Patan says that it'll all be fine, and the situation will be over in a couple of months. Despite Patan's confidence, another six months go by. The locusts outside of containment continue to eat only plant matter, which is bad enough, but the ones in containment have continued to evolve. They now seem to eat practically any matter with the only known exception being silicon-based glass. They seem to prefer fresh organic matter over anything else, but this has necessitated their containment chamber being covered in hardened glass. They are continuing to feed the swarm for research purposes, but kill most of them with fire after they multiply. Fire is their best bet, as the locusts in containment have become highly resistant to any sort of chemical-based attack, likely as a side effect of their ability to consume them. Any conventional chemicals are absolutely useless, and even the special stuff engineered by the foundation, or from other anomalies, has proven to be ineffective. Physical force is also out, as they can simply eat through pretty much any weapon used, aside from impractical glass weapons, leaving only intense heat or radiation as their options. If this swarm were to ever be released, they'd make the current wild locusts look like a small problem in comparison. Of course, with a setup like that, you knew that it was bound to happen, and eventually, in July of 2022, the subspecies they had in containment broke out. One day, they mutated and developed the ability to consume glass in addition to every other form of matter, eating through their containment cell. The Foundation's plan for this circumstance was to detonate a nuclear warhead contained at the site in order to wipe them out before they could flee, but Dr. Patan heads through the site to call off the detonation, 
believing that they can still recontain the Locusts inside of the underground site. At the control center, he encounters Simmons, brandishing a gun after having lost most of his right arm to the Locusts. Simmons accuses Baton of having purposefully orchestrated the breach in order to get rid of him, as Simmons was apparently planning to remove Patan as lead researcher. Patan doesn't respond to this accusation, instead telling Simmons that they need to disarm the nuke since they can recontain the Locust. Patan tries calling the MTF leader in charge of the Locust containment to have him back up the claim, but he doesn't get an answer. In the end, Simmons gives him 30 minutes to try and recontain the situation before he detonates the nuke. Time ticks by, and Patan eventually comes to terms with the idea of detonating the nuke, acknowledging that he had been so invested in being humanity's savior against these locusts that he never slowed down to think if they were doing the right things. While prepping the nuke, they get alerted to a notice that an area of the site had been recontained, and they get a call on the radio from the MTF leader, Captain Quail. The MTF had managed to push the Locusts back and contain them to a small number of sections, although he doesn't know for how long, since they can eat through pretty much anything. Since Patan knows now that they'll never actually recontain the Locusts, he still wants to go through with the nuke. Since the site is no longer in Code Red status now, however, the only way they can go through with it is to open all of the doors in the site to bring them back into Code Red status. They evacuate everyone in the site first, and give them all time to drive away. While finishing the prep, they hear an alert that a number of the fire doors in the site have been breached, which were made of glass. Since Patan had apparently orchestrated this containment breach, they hadn't realized until now that the locust could actually eat glass. They initiate the nuke and destroy the entire site. Unbeknownst to them, however, for whatever reason, the captain of the MTF had been driving away in a containment van carrying several of the modified locusts. Before long, the locusts ate through the captain and the entire van, breaching containment and beginning the end of the world. Within the hour, LARPA received a distress call from a nearby town, claiming that they were under assault from an unusually aggressive group of locusts, with several people already eaten. By the time Foundation agents arrived, it was a ghost town, and the locusts had moved on. The O5 Council declared it an active end-of-the-world scenario, and by evening, the locust swarm ranged from Oregon to Colorado, with projections pointing that they'll blanket the U.S. within 18 hours, and the world within 48. That's technically where this story ends, with the rest left mostly to our imagination. There is an SCP that seems to be connected to the insect hell scenario, however, possibly from an alternate timeline. SCP-4991 is the designation for the period from April 7th, 2016 to April 9th, 2016 when major social networking websites such as Twitter, Reddit, and 4chan all experienced a number of posts that referenced non-existent events. During this period, users were met with errors that hindered their ability to post, although the anomalous posts were all seemingly created by existing accounts. Two days after its initial manifestation, all anomalous activity suddenly ceased, and the websites restored normal functionality. 4991 was reclassified as neutralized, all evidence of the post were wiped out, and a viral Class K amnestic was distributed. We're given a sampling of some of the posts made by 4991 during this time, starting with some from Twitter. A post from real Donald Trump mentions that someone named Moore stepped out of an agreement, complaining that when the world is ending, he started to get a bit antsy, and asks if Earth is not good enough for him. A post from Deer College advises that insect arcana is not to be attempted for the time being by students, and entrances into fey-related areas have been closed down for maintenance. The World Health Ministry warns everyone in North America to not go outside, and if you ever breathe outside, to please call poison control. 
The Twitter account for the musical group BTS sent out a post reading, I can't breathe in Korean. Someone else tweeted about Marshall, Carter and Dark selling anti-insect bunkers for $4 million, and musician Travis Scott tweeted, it all ends in tears anyway. Over on Reddit, someone posted asking about the SCP Foundation and their securement plan, with someone else explaining that the plan was an agreement between the US government and the Foundation in order to reduce the number of bugs, requiring the budget from several large nations, as well as around 90% of the Foundation's budget, due to the extreme expenses from the pesticides they planned on using. It seems that a couple of days prior, the O5-1 of the Foundation, Colt Moore, stepped out of the securement plan for reasons unknown, and afterwards, the SCP Foundation entirely disappeared. Everyone associated with the Foundation has vanished, and all of their sites are now completely empty. The bug population increased tenfold in their absence. Someone else posts a picture of a beautiful flock of birds flying over their town, but someone else comments that those aren't birds. Someone on Tumblr posted that the bugs are pretty easy to catch, as they just opened their door and threw out a net, but says not to let them into your mouth as they love to crawl in there. Others post about holding out in their basement with enough food and water to last at least six months, and if you have to go outside for any reason to cover your mouth. The person that posted about catching the bug later posts a warning to not catch them and to not let them inside. On 4chan, someone posts asking if anyone ever feels like God hates his creations, while someone else posts that they just strung up their friend in the woods and cut him open while all the bugs started swarming them. Someone else comments that they had to kill their sister as the bugs got to her, and she started attacking her family with a knife. She killed her father, and the bugs instantly swarmed and ate the corpse. The poster says that there's some mist coming out of the bugs, and they can feel them rubbing on their skin. Someone else posts a picture of a tree covered in insects, with another individual asking them why they're outside, and someone else commenting that ignorance will be the birth and death of humanity. It's hard to say if it's the exact same insect hell scenario, but it's pretty close and pretty horrific. There is one last tale, though, that presents a possible conclusion to the insect hell scenario, one not entirely filled with doom and gloom. It begins with mentioning the events of July 25th, 2022, as the swarm of anomalous locusts escapes from the Foundation facility. Five months later, an emergency beacon in Idaho didn't receive its daily signal from Site-19, suggesting that no one was left alive there to send out the signal. The beacon then pinged Site-31, but didn't receive a response, nor did it receive one from Sites-84, 119, or 12. It began working its way through all of the 3,547 sites controlled by the Foundation, but didn't receive a single response. 24 hours later, it attempted the same process again, still receiving no response. It proceeded to carry this process out every day for a year before moving on to the next step in its protocol, deactivating its cloaking system and calling for help. It took a long time of calling out and receiving no response before something changed. A woman eventually heard the call and followed it to the beacon, finding a small gray rectangle with a red button on it, which she pushes. The beacon, which contains an AI, is relieved to finally get a response, and quickly asks if the locusts are still out there. The woman, Caroline North, says that she hasn't seen a live one in about half a year, as they died off due to running out of things to eat. The AI tells her that it's a third generation AI construct built by the SCP Foundation, named Solomon. Solomon proceeds to explain to her what the SCP Foundation was, and how they protected mankind from anomalous threats. Caroline is pretty skeptical, comparing them to the Men in Black, 
And even though the locusts were pretty different, she doesn't believe that there could be more things like that out there. In order to prove that anomalies exist, Solomon plays a disharmonious series of notes, which causes her to be unable to move her left arm for a minute, explaining it as a cognito hazard. He continues, explaining that a friend of the Foundation's introduced them to some harmless locusts that could eat quickly and breed quickly in March of the previous year. He goes on to mention the researcher that was suddenly devoured by the locusts in containment, but says that containment continued as usual. When they found the locusts eating through their cell, they added glass, which they couldn't eat. He admits that these sudden mutations were possibly the Foundation's fault, as none of the ones outside were mutating. They eventually ate through the glass and breached containment, with not even a nuke stopping the problem. Now the locusts are all gone, but only after consuming practically everything on Earth. Caroline sat and pondered this for a long time, before asking how the Foundation could possibly let this happen. In a rage, she asks why the Foundation wouldn't just exterminate all of the locusts instead of keeping them in a cage and letting this happen. Solomon simply explains that that wasn't how the Foundation operated, as they secured, contained, and protected not only mankind, but the anomalies as well. They needed to know everything they could from the locusts, as knowledge was their greatest weapon. Obviously, in the end, they were wrong. Solomon apologizes to Caroline on behalf of the Foundation, and says that they could have done better, and they should have done better. Caroline says that she had a fiancé, and they were sent into different trucks when the government evacuated their area. After the locust died out, she went looking for him, finding the remains of his truck. There wasn't even any bones left to bury. Solomon apologizes again, acknowledging that his apology won't bring him back. Caroline begins crying, asking why he's telling her all this. Solomon says that they can fix all of this, but he needs her help. He explains that the Foundation has a facility deep underneath Yellowstone containing a lot of machines that can rebuild the world, SCP-2000. It has everything they need from cloning tanks to a complete backup of the World Wide Web. He needs Caroline to go there, as it has to be activated by a human being. They didn't use the facility earlier, as they weren't sure the time was right, since it's a big decision to make. It has to be Caroline, as there's no one left in the Foundation to do it. Caroline refuses, and says that she doesn't want anything to do with this. She just wanted to get married, have a kid or two, and live the rest of her life as an ordinary human, not doing something this important. Solomon pleads with her, saying that it's just a button, but Caroline says it isn't. There are things that man does, and there are things that God does, and resetting the entire world isn't something that mankind can go and do by itself. Solomon simply says that they've done it before, although they don't know when or why, or even how many times. All they know is the facility has been used before, when someone in the past made the decision to abandon their world and everything in it, so that mankind could live on. Maybe it was someone from the Foundation, or maybe it was someone like Caroline, but Solomon doesn't think the difference is important. All that matters is that someone looked at that button and asked themselves whether mankind should dare step into the domain of God and whether they had the right to do this. They asked themselves if humanity would be better off just giving up, but at the end of the day, they pushed that button. He begs her to be that somebody. She again refuses, and Solomon again apologizes, even if his apologies don't mean much. He's sorry that the Foundation failed her, that she lost so much because of their mistakes, and that he has to ask her to do this, but he begs her to help them make things right. Caroline sat and thought about it for a while, thinking of her parents, her friends, and her fiancé. She thought about all the people she knew and all the people she didn't, 
the world she once lived in, filled with life, and the world as it was now, without green grass and birds singing. It was a world without life, all because some secret organization couldn't keep a few locusts in a cage. She thought about the button, and taking the role of God to save mankind by destroying it. Finally, she sighs, and says that she'll try, but can't promise anything. Solomon thanks her, and the rest is history. It is certainly possible, then, that the humanity of the primary timeline already went through the insect hell scenario, and were saved thanks to the actions of a brave individual. Or rather, humanity itself was saved, but the people were not, as SCP-2000 doesn't actually bring people back to life. Either way, it's a fairly terrifying and yet ironic situation. Of all the reality-ending threats in the SCP universe, from godlike entities to galaxy destroyers, the Foundation could finally fail thanks to a single, anomalous bug. <laughs>